Welcome back everyone. My name's Frank and I'm glad that you're here. Virtualization is a key concept within modern computer systems, whether for testing, development, infrastructure management, data center operations, cloud services, and education and training. Virtualization offers me the ability to create a completely isolated operating system with its own set of applications that doesn't interfere with other computers running their own operating system and their own applications. This isolation is good for security, it's good for training, it's good for education, testing, all the things I talked about. So in this video, I'm going to go through some of the concepts of virtualization at a fairly basic level, but at a level that will allow you to then see me demonstrate the creation of a Windows 10 virtual machine and see how it works. I'm using VMware Workstation, but there are many tools you can use for virtualization, and I'll do some demonstrations on this channel using Hyper-V, VMware Player, VMware Workstation, and some other tools that are really useful. If you like this video, hit like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if this is the type of video that you would like to see more of, some of the more technical infrastructure type of videos. Let's go have a look. Before we build a virtual machine, let's just take a look at computer systems and some of the foundational principles around how virtualization makes use of an existing computer's hardware in order to allow us to run another machine on top of that machine. First of all, let's take a look at what's part of a computer system. The first thing we have is compute. The compute layer is comprised of the processor and the memory and together they allow me to execute code against the uh, system. It allows me to communicate with the processor, the memory allows me to communicate with the processor and the processor performs the instructions for the computer. The next thing that we have on the computer is storage. Storage allows me to save documents, it allows me to save data, and that's typically implemented as a either a mechanical hard drive or a solid state hard drive. And then finally we have the network, the ability to communicate to the outside world and to communicate, for example, client, server, whatever the case may be. Now, we don't typically access these hardware resources directly. We don't go in there, you know, program an assembler or have to actually determine exactly what a hex address we're going to use for the hard drive and such. We will communicate with all of these through an operating system. This operating system, or OS, allows a human to interact with the operating system and the operating system then speaks to the compute, storage, and network components of the system. Now this is a slight oversimplification of what's happening here, but again, it's enough for us to understand virtualization. There are many different operating systems, for example, Windows, Linux, Apple, but we're going to just look at Windows right now, but we can use virtualization on all of those other platforms as well. Now, in order to actually get any work done, we're then going to install applications. There are many different applications out there. We may be familiar with example, uh, with Office, Word, and Excel, and PowerPoint, all of those different applications. But normally what happens is our compute storage and network on many operating systems, or many computers these days, is really not being utilized to its fullest extent. We're not running it at 100% utilization. So wouldn't it be neat if there was a way for me to take these physical hardware resources and instead of just running one operating system, take a little bit of the compute, take a little bit of the storage and take a little bit of the network and let them run another operating system on that same piece of hardware. And that's where virtualization comes in. So instead of going in and running an one operating system with a bunch of applications, I'm going to install a special application called VMware. Now, VMware runs on top of Windows or it runs on top of Linux as well. And there's a version called Fusion that runs on Mac, but it runs on top of the operating system, which is talking to the actual hardware resources of this physical computer. But instead of opening up a new document or opening up a spreadsheet or a presentation, in VMware, what I open up is an operating system. More specifically, what I'm doing is I use VMware to create a virtual machine. And what that virtual machine will do is it will take some of the compute, some of the storage, and some of the network of my host operating system and give that to that virtual machine. 
This will give us the ability to have virtual compute, virtual storage, virtual network, and even virtual inputs for this virtual machine. And then we can install an operating system onto this machine and applications onto this machine as well. Which means that I can have a Windows 10 machine running as my host operating system and have Windows Server running as a virtual machine. Or I could have a Linux machine as my host operating system and run Windows 10 as a virtual machine. There are great possibilities with this because this also is isolated from the main system and that allows me to make sure that if anything goes bad on this system here, I'm going to be able to continue to use my regular host machine and I can just delete that virtual machine. I can do testing on that virtual machine, whatever I want to do without affecting the actual hardware or without affecting the actual machine that this virtual machine is running upon. Let's go build one and I'll talk through that process as we do that. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to create a fairly simple virtual machine and I'm not going to go through absolutely every option in VMware, but I am going to go in and I'm going to open up VMware and I'm opening up VMware Workstation. And it is important to note that this isn't the only option that I have in terms of creating a virtual machine. You can use Hyper-V, which is a feature of Windows 10 Professional and above. And you can also use other virtualization technologies. I'm a big fan of VMware. I've been using it for many, many years. And I like it because it's a very transportable virtual machine, which means that when I create a virtual machine, I can actually copy it onto an external hard drive go to another computer running VMware and open it up on that other computer. So we get uh, a lot of features in here that are very useful. I'm not gonna go through all of them like I said, but I am gonna go into VMware here and you'll notice that I have some options here. So I'm gonna go and create a new virtual machine. I can open an existing virtual machine. I can even connect to a uh, server in the distance on my network that is running virtual machines. But we're gonna create a new one as if I was gonna create a little testing environment. Now I can create a typical virtual machine, which will put a lot of the configuration settings in there for me, or I can do a custom virtual machine, which I'm going to do just so that I can talk through the different elements. I'm gonna go next, and it's gonna ask me about compatibility. So you'll notice that I can have some compatibility choices here. Again, some of these options, I'm just gonna accept the defaults and move on so that I can build a virtual machine for you. Now, one of the things that's going to ask is about an installer disk. So if I have a physical uh, DVD, I can actually install it into a physical uh, DVD player and then use it. Although I haven't seen a physical DVD for a long time. So what I can do instead is if I download the ISO file, maybe I have a subscription to um, Azure uh, tools, for example, I can have uh, software for developers, I can have all sorts of different ways to get ISOs. So if I get the ISO, I'm just gonna browse to the location of the ISOs and it's important for me to choose an actual operating system here. So here I have, for example, I have some Ubuntu, I have some Tails operating system for security. I have a lot of interesting different ISOs in here, but I'm gonna choose Windows 10. So we're gonna do a Windows 10 business edition, and we're gonna say open that. And this is as if I had just inserted the DVD into a DVD player, but I'm doing it from a software standpoint. I'm gonna say next, and it's going to ask me for the product key. Now for the purposes again of this demonstration, I'm not going to put in a product key, but that does mean that I will need to activate Windows 10 at some point to take advantage of all the features. I'm also gonna create a password for myself. Now by default, it will create a uh, administrator account. And that administrator account, oh, let me grab that again. Talking and typing at the same time never works out. Okay, and I'm gonna have it uh, use this, create this additional user account called Frank, which will be an administrator account. It'll throw a warning at me saying you didn't put in a product key, and I know I didn't, that's okay. It's then gonna ask me what do I wanna call this virtual machine, and I'll call it Windows 10 for YouTube. So maybe I'm gonna use this to do some YouTube videos. Uh, maybe I want a nice clean environment without all my personal icons on it. I don't normally do that. But then I'm gonna go in and choose where I'm going to store this virtual machine. So I'm actually going to store this on an external hard drive. Actually, I'll choose a little bit of a faster hard drive there. And what I'll do is I'll create a new folder and I'll call this uh, demo VM for YouTube. 
Now, this uh, particular hard drive is an external hard drive, and this external hard drive is um, connected through a USB-C port. So I'm going to go in there, I'm going to say OK to this, and it's going to install on here. I'll say Next. And then I'm just going to take the default in terms of firmware, but we do have some options there. Processor options. Now the key here is you cannot exceed what your base system has. So whatever my host system has, my actual machine that I'm running, you can't say if I've got, for example, one processor in my host that I all of a sudden say, well, my virtual machine will have 20. That'd be nice if you could do it, but you can't. It's always going to be a subset of the hardware you have on your host. And then I can choose how much memory I need for this machine. Now, this particular computer that I'm using has 32 gigs of RAM in it. So you can see the maximum recommended is 27.9, which would only leave about four gigs or so for my host machine. But I can certainly up this up to say eight gigs of RAM. And that's going to make a fairly uh, powerful little virtual machine here that I can run. It is also important to note that you don't necessarily need as much RAM in a virtual machine as you would if you were installing this on an actual laptop. So I'm going next here and I'm just going to use NAT in terms of getting an IP address and I'm just going to take the default for my IO controller and I'm also going to choose a uh, typical recommended hard drive. I can choose older hard drives if I'm doing something with an application that requires it but I'll just take that. Now I'm going to create a new virtual disk. You can also attach to an existing virtual disk and you can even use the physical disk for virtualization but those are more advanced. Uh, using an existing virtual disk is handy because if we create this disk, I can actually copy that onto an external drive, carry it to work, use a VM workstation viewer there and connect to it. That's maybe another video. If you'd like to see that, let me know. Uh, comments down below. So I'll go next. Maximum disk size. I'll just take the default. Now this is something that I like to do. I like to store it as a single file. Now be aware that if you do store it as a single file, the file system of your drive that you're storing it on has to be able to handle large files. For example, if I have this formatted with an FAT file system, it's not going to allow me to have a 60 gigabyte file on there. I'm going to have to split it into multiple files. But in my case, I've formatted my hard drive with NTFS, which is a file system that allows me to have larger hard drives. So again, I'll go next. That'll be the name of the disk I create. I'll say next. And now it says, okay, is this what you want? I can customize it further, change the amount of RAM, change the size of the disk, so on and so forth. But I'm happy with my choices and I'm now going to say finish. So it's going to create that virtual disk. Now it will not allocate the 60 gigs of space at once. What it will do is it'll say, I'm going to install on this hard drive, but I'm only going to use as much disk space as I actually need. And I will grow to a maximum of 60 gigs in size. What this means is that I can have multiple virtual machines on my hard drive. And let's say I have 10 virtual machines, all with 60 gigs. I don't necessarily need to have 600 gigs. All I need to do is I need to have enough space for what's actually installed and they can grow to 60 gigs each. I just have to watch and monitor that storage. Now you will notice that the setup is starting and it's going to also install some additional components that will allow me to drag files to and from this virtual machine once this virtual machine is created. Notice I can choose which version of Windows that I want to install, Windows 10. I didn't put in a key, so because I didn't put in a key, I can choose whatever version I want because it's the same installation files. However, it is important to note that this will not work until I put in a valid key for all of the advanced features. So I'll take a Windows 10 Pro in trial and it's now going to go and copy all those files and begin the installation process. Okay, so now you can see it's installed the files and it's going to do a restart. And when my system restarts, we're going to see Windows 10. We get the logo and Windows 10 appears. It'll automatically log me in with that account that I created when I set everything up and I go through the Windows 10 installation process of starting up a new machine where it sets everything up for me. It's just as if I had a brand new computer that I had turned on for the very first time. But here we are. I now have Windows 10 inside of, well, in my case, Windows 10. And if I resize this window, you'll notice that it also resizes the guest machine. 
So how do I actually log in? Well, you can go up to the, where the VM is and you can send in a control alt delete. If you click on the inside here, you'll see that it will ask me for my password. So I'm going to go in and click in here and I'll type in my password. Okay, so I've typed in my password and now I can go into this machine and I can install applications. I can put data in here and this will all be isolated from the machine on the outside. Now I can join the network, so I'll have the network joined in there. And there are a lot of very interesting things that I can do here. So for example, if I have some files here, so I have some images and these are on my host machine. So I'm just gonna drag one of those images onto my virtual machine and through something called VMware tools, it's going to automatically bring that over here. So now I could, for example, go into the file system, which you'll notice was completely separate from the file system of my host machine. This machine only thinks it has one hard drive, which is the C drive. It thinks it has a DVD, but that's really the ISO file that I use to install Windows 10. And if I go in here, I could go into, say, for example, pictures, and I could take my image here. Let me grab this and move this out of the way. Take this fellow here and put it into the images. And now I've got a image in there. Go into my personalization settings and I can actually personalize this machine. So I'll just browse for a... Oh, I have to activate it before I can personalize it. So I'd have to put in a key. But you get the idea. I can go and browse the internet off this machine and it will be completely separate from my machine. Now be aware that I will be sharing an IP address with my host machine. So if I want to, for example, go on the internet anonymously or so, I'll still have to use a VPN. Um, if you're interested, again, comment down below. I can show you how to set up a Tails operating system, which is an encrypted operating system that uses the Tor network in order to have super security. But that's another story for another time. So just going to go in there. <clears throat> you can see that I've got this Microsoft Edge gives me the welcome experience and such. And if I go into this machine and I'll go into my system settings. So if I go into system information here, notice that it has the system model is VMware. <coughs> notice it's given it a name. And if I scroll here and I look at some of the components, it has eight gigabytes of RAM and you know typical machine, but it is not my host machine. My host machine has much more than that. <coughs> but what I've done is I've created this nice virtual machine here. And I can even go in and I can go in and download software on here and run this as a complete sandbox environment. So that was a fairly simple demonstration of creating a virtual machine. And I'll create some more videos on that later. But there you have it. We use VMware in order to create a virtual machine. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that was useful for you. And I hope that you'll go and get a copy of VMware Player, uh, VMware Workstation you have to pay for, but you can get a trial version or VMware Player, which is free, and create your own virtual machine to test this out. We'll see you in the next video, and here are some other videos you can take a look at in the meantime.